Friends of the Fall River Library for sponsoring this program. We are hosting Donna Mata, who I'm sure some of you know from local TV. And she has fulfilled a lifelong dream, as she said, ever since she was six years old, she wanted to write a book, and she has done so. And I will say how many years have left. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Actually, I have written this book. It has been a lifelong dream. Ever since I was six years old, I've wanted to write. I knew that I had a passion for the written word forever and ever and ever. I always knew what I wanted to do, and it took me a long time to get here. And for the younger people in the room who just graduated from college, congratulations, Jessica Blair. Yes, that's good. And my former but still BCC student, Kate, who came to support me, and she was wonderful to have in class. Let's, let's. And actually, for the rest of us, too. The reason why I'm having this book, re well, this, it's not even a book reading. This is an author talk. Because what I'm here to do is to not only say that, yeah, I wrote this book, isn't that great? Hey, it's 10 bucks, buy my book. It's not about that. Well, it is about the $10 when you think about it, because all that food probably cost me more. But that's OK. That's OK. Because I did fulfill a dream. And I made it happen. And I would like to thank my son, who's sitting very supportively in the back, for having me do that. Because while I self-published on Amazon through Kindle Direct Publishing, and I'll go a little into that, what that process was all about, what I really wanted to do that day, and the book has been sitting in the computer for quite some time, was to clean the kitchen. And I said to Luke, we must clean, we must dust, we must dust, we have to clean. And he said, but you have a book at the computer. He did not want to clean. But I said, yes, I know, but it's like, I'm not ready to give that book out into the world yet. Because when you do that, you give a part of yourself away. It's literally like giving birth to a baby. And I think a lot of us who have dreams, whether you're dressed, graduating college or retiring, you don't necessarily think you can reach whatever that dream is. And some of you who know me very well in the, in the room, Michelle Blair, know that I've had my trials and tribulations throughout my life. And so it's, it's an honor for me to be here. And it's an honor to be supported by everyone who came because we have to support one another no matter what it is. We've all gone through rough times. We've all, we know what that's like. Even the younger kids know what it's like paying for college, dating, getting married, Ainsley, you know, starting, starting our life. But it doesn't matter where you are in life because it could happen. And I started to say, my book has been in my computer for a very long time. And it was all ready to go. And I made the excuse of, oh, I don't really know about the technology. Well, I probably know a little bit about technology because I work with a wonderful woman back there. Michelle Dumas is working the camera at FRC Media, Community Media. She's supporting us. And my other coworker, Jane Dorsey, who's here, who, who said she'd stop by if she could, she also was a very big support because she's here, and isn't that what it's all about? So thank you very much, Jane, for coming as well. And Joanne I've worked with, and, and some of you I don't know. But in a way, we all have a connection. We all have a connection to each other. The characters in my book have a connection to each other, they have a connection to me, and they have a connection to the world. And when Luke said, no, press the button that says publish to KDP, I said, welcome, have a cookie. <laughs> I said, no, I can't press that button because it really is like giving birth to a baby, literally. What happens if you get rejected? What happens if the book isn't good enough? What happens if the characters aren't well developed? What happens if there's no climax or two or three or four? And then I say, said to myself, well, it doesn't matter because it's written, and it is what it is, and I can only get better from here, both professionally as well as a person. So I feel that having this book talk is more about the book, although I love the book cover. <laughs> That's my book. Yeah. I actually got somebody on Fiverr, which is a, a program that you just could look for people who could do things that you cannot. I don't have that visual eye. I don't. It, it's, I, he said, the graphic designer said to me, so what do you want it to look like? I'm like, well, there's a doctor. And there's some people who like have an affair, because that's always fun. Because like I always dreamed of having an affair, but my husband's just too sweet. I couldn't do that to him. So why not put in a book? Is that cheating? I don't know. I don't know, come to think of it. But it is, when you think about it, it is kind of, hey, let your imagination go wild. The things you wouldn't do in real life, 
you can do in a book, but you also can do that in an art project. You can do that in music. And it doesn't matter what kind of music you're interested in. It could be classical, it could be heavy metal. It doesn't matter. Whenever you put yourself out there, it doesn't matter what anyone thinks. It doesn't even matter how well it's received. Although I will say that I have gotten a couple of good reviews from people I don't know. So, and it makes you, and it does make you feel good. But I'm also on this path and of just continuing with this passion that yeah, I'll get bad reviews. It's okay. Everybody has their different feelings, their, their different genres and categories of writing that they like, movies that we like. I mean, people do sci-fi, obviously. People do, I mean, I love suspense. I've always loved suspense fiction. Uh, some of, James Patterson, always my favorite. But, I, but I, just to get back a little bit to how I wanted to write and how I think that we all have those inner dreams. I remember this. I grew up in, in Yonkers, New York, and I remember I, I was in I want to say probably in ninth grade in high school. And I, by that time, knew that I was going to make a, a, a living writing. I just knew it. And I picked up, and some of you in the room will know, I picked up a book for 25 cents at a bookstore. And, and I, re I, was in, I was in ninth grade, I remember. And it was Rosemary's Baby. Oh, no. <laughs> the book was Rosemary's Baby. And I you know, was relatively young, obviously, but I looked at it and I said, wow, it seems like such an interesting concept. And I read it, and I thought about it, the writing, the character development, everything from that young of an age. But life gets in the way. You grow up, you have to make a living, you have to do whatever, and so you put it off. I don't think there's anything that somebody has not put off in this room somewhere, somehow. And it's the roadblocks that we put in, in front of us. And I've done it. Luke, I can't press the publish button. Now, I could read you some of my book, but I don't want to bore you, because the book <laughs> is very suspenseful in itself. And it does move quickly, but I've studied the art form for years, and I mean 30 years I've studied the art form, probably more than that. The characters are developed. They're developed through a creative process, yes, but they're also created from people you meet from experiences you have, from life, from what happens to us in life. And I'm hoping that when you walk out of this room, that whatever your passion is, that you go for it. And some of you may even be thinking, I don't know what that is. I don't know what will make me happy or excited. It's not always the money. It's not always being the perfect mother. Oh, yes, that's right. I tried that. That didn't work very well. I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't really cook. I, I didn't really bake brownies. I wasn't that kind of a mother, but I really tried to encourage my kids to be creative in their own way and to come out of their of their own. So this book was my first one, and I honestly can say that it wrote itself. I started the book, and it does start ironically, in the Great Depression. It's not a historical fiction. It does, it, it, it's not like historical in, in terms of like a Victorian era type thing. But the character was born and then it goes generationally to the present time. And it's a young man who grows up in the Depression, gets a lot of grief, says, I, I want to get out of the Depression, and then does so. And then of course, like happens to us, life happened for him. And he had losses, he had grief, he had heartache, and that hardened him. So he had to question his morals. Sometimes we do, sometimes we question our ethics. But in real life, you don't necessarily go down that bad path. In books, you can do whatever you want. I mean, you could do whatever it is you want. I have, I don't want to really give away some parts if, if anybody does truly want to read it because it, it it, it's a fast read, it is a fast read, but there's something that happens that actually, I was like, how did I even come up with that? Because the character wanted to do that. And I am writing a sequel, it's called The House of the Broken Glass, and it's a sequel to this book. I wasn't going to do a sequel. Uh, this is Melissa, this is my friend Melissa, who very supports me very well. Who, yes, we have to clap for Melissa because she said she would come no matter what no matter what, and she obviously got here. <laughs> and of course, I lost my train of thought. But <laughs> what is the name of the book before you go 
Oh, the second book is called The House of the Broken Glass. And it sort of just came to me one day. And Glass is the, one of the main characters in the book. It's also a mystery. Interestingly, and I thought this was interesting as a writer, when I wrote this book and it started in the Great Depression, I thought, okay, the book ends. But as my friend Michelle, who did read it, said, what, what do you mean it ends? I need to know what happens. But I didn't have a sequel in mind. And then I thought, well, I really can't do that because the setting is in, you know, when he was growing up in the Great Depression and then through the years, but then it ended like in the 80s. And I thought, well, wait a minute, I could always still do it because it's fiction, right? You could do whatever you want in fiction. You could do whatever it is you want in fiction. You could take all that emotion, all that feeling, all that desire and just put it in words. How, how many people have written? I know Kate has, Kate's had a book. Any, you, you have a book? Yeah. No. Oh, see she did the, oh no, and put her hand over her face. Because, oh no, I can't do that. How come you don't have a book? I'm working on one. Okay, good, good. Do you plan on self-publishing? Um, I, I don't know. The self-publishing versus the traditional publishing, and I've been doing, well, I am a journalist. I've worked in radio and television and just obviously social media today it's just television with with Michelle cable television and i i saw how the technology has changed obviously so is it easier to get published now yes it's a little different the self publishing realm it's really not vanity publishing anymore because if you have a good product and you know that it's good and you know you know as a writer whether something is good or not you just know you might not say, oh, it's great, or it's the best thing, or whatever, and have an ego. I'm not talking about that. But you know if something's well written. So why not put it out there? Because we have that kind of forum. But you have to have the drive, you have to have the ambition, and you have to have the faith to give birth to that baby. And even in the men in the room who may want to write, you have to say, yes, I want to be a father to these characters, to this book. Because it does become a part of you. It does become a part of you. And again, we could do anything that we want. And it was sort of a little bit of a learning process for me, not the writing part. I've been writing for a very long time. I've, I, and I did do the Audible version. What I, I'm an Audible narrator because I didn't think I could do it. And then my husband set up a little studio in the closet. And he said, yes, you can. Press this button. We press a lot of buttons at our house. <laughs> and, and so I'm like, OK. And so I figured it out. I figured out the technology. It wasn't easy. Michelle helped me initially because we work with video. I'm like, no, 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 just show me how to do this. And she's like, you don't need the video. You just need the audio. But doing the audio book, who likes audio books? Does any, like who prefers audio over reading? Okay, just not about, oh, maybe about half. And it does depend on the lifestyle. But to do both is a, is a lot of fun, and it's doable, because you could also find narrators you know, through, through Audible. Uh, obviously, people will work. And you either narrate for a royalty, or you just do a flat rate and do it. But it's something you really have to like, because you have to edit it, obviously. Um, I'm, and I thought maybe, instead of reading, and I know I should be reading my, my but I, I just, I, there's so many different things that if I read it, it'll give away some of what happens and I don't want to do that. Because if you decide to read it, I just don't want to do that. Because again, the character surprised myself. So I'm wondering if I could have a volunteer. Oh, thank you, Joanne. OK. Pick a napkin, any napkin. Seriously, pick a napkin. Oh, I knew she was going to go for that, because it's the yellow one. And it says, Jean-Paul Chantel. Now he's hot. <laughs> Jean, he is my French guy who I never really dated. He was the guy that you wanted to date, and he was the player. And he's the player in the book. He, he has the hot and heavy role towards the end. And you just want to love him, but you also want to kill him. Does that happen? <laughs> I'm not really sure, but I'll tell you. He does speak French when he wants to. As a matter of fact, I know this because I actually had to translate some of the French he said. <laughs> But, but again, he comes in sort of at the end of the book, but yeah, we like him. So can I have another volunteer? We like getting the guys involved, because a, a lot of these book things are, I think we went. Oh, you went for the yellow one too, who's that? Ronnie Oxman, oh, you picked a good one too. 
See this? See this? I love this, this picture of my, my, my guys. That's Ronnie. <laughs> yeah, Ronnie. And his last name is Oxman, and it's the first of the Oxman series. It gets good. It gets good. In that sense, it gets good. And Ronnie is the antagonist or not? Is he a protagonist? Is he an antagonist? Is everything black and white? No. Are our ethics black and white or our morals black and white? Not really. Given the right situation, any of us could do anything. The moms and fathers in the room, oh, I couldn't hurt somebody. Oh, yes, you could. If someone was after your child, oh, yes, you could. Yes, you could. Jealousy, rage, all the emotions are, are in this book. Here, I'm going to pick one, see who I get. Oh, Jack, he's my favorite. Yeah, Jack, Jack Oxman. I'm not going to tell you who he is in the book, but Jack is um, kind of crazy. And yeah, the people who know me probably understand that. I really relate to him well. Because he, he's sort of, he's literally crazy in the book, but we don't really know what, what he does. He, he, but he's also an Oxman. So it, it's, the Oxman series has started because of my good friend Michelle in the back who said you have to continue. So The House of the Broken Glass is the sequel to the Oxman series, which will be out in June. And yeah, I have, well, okay, a, a, fr a very good friend of mine, who by the way, I never thought would read the book, <laughs> my friend Carol, Carol Bro, I wish she was here, but she unfortunately moved away from us and she's down in South Carolina now. And she read the book and said, and she was like the first one to call me and say, so when's the next book coming out? And I said, oh, Carol, you're just my friend. How much do I have to pay you? <laughs> and she said, well, have you read the book? I said, well, yes. She goes, well, I have to know what happens. And I'm like, but I don't know what happens. So The House of the Broken Glass will be the sequel. Which is, by the way, a lot easier because once you have your characters down, the crazy one, the lover, the hot guy, <laughs> you know, what it, once you have them down, it's easier to develop. Uh, how many writers in the room? I, I don't know if you, okay, so two writers, and the rest of you like to read? Reading is fun. Kate, tell me why, <laughs> yes, I'm back oh, at BCC. Have you seen her room you've done? Uh, no, I wouldn't. I've seen my daughter's room, and I'm still alive. <laughs> Even my Stella has totes on top of totes with books. She's oh, come on up, Kate. Kate was a student of mine at BCC in last semester, and I teach public speaking, and this kid is so awesome, and she helped me so much with the technology when it comes to the classroom. Two can keep a secret. Ooh. But see how the visuals for the book covers even? Oh, maybe I should put mine in front. <laughs> what is it, fiction? Uh, oh, she doesn't even know. See, this kid reads all the time. And we read for enjoyment. Thank you, Kate. We read for enjoyment. We read to escape reality. We write to do the same thing. What other hobbies do people have? What do you love to do? What do you love to do? Cycles. You're a cyclist? Bicycles? Cycle? Oh, that's awesome. Make sure you wear a helmet. We do, we do the public safety thing. And, and you have a passion for that? Have you ever thought about writing it, about it? No, uh, I actually wrote a book, Donna, um, but it's a nonfiction, and I went the traditional route and got rejected by pick a number. I think I lost count, 52, 53. Oh no, you didn't get rejected. They didn't accept it. No, they did. They no, you didn't get rejected. You, so you closest, just didn't get the uh, yes yet. The closest I came to getting it published is I found on the computer an outfit that identifies themselves as a Christian mm -hmm. publishing company, mm -hmm. Covenant, out of, I believe, South Carolina. Makes sense. The book is sort of spiritual in nature, so it's not going to be a bestseller at Barnes & Noble. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. We don't say that anymore. You don't know. And you really don't know. Joyce, help me out, the name of the book, and I have to say, I'm not a big fan of it. You know what I'm thinking. All the, all the women in here know. Fifty Shades of Grey, who said that? I wrote Fifty Shades of Grey. Okay, see, you should be writing a book if you know that book, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> no, I read it, it was, for me it was peer pressure. It was a time where all the, <laughs> Michelle, I think it was, Katie was in middle school or something, like, well, I better read this book. It really wasn't well written, and I'm not approved by any stretch. It just, it was not well written, which annoyed me. And yet that woman is a bazillionaire. 
And so you know something? No, you don't know. You don't know. And I think you don't know. I mean, I, I would love my book to take off. I don't know if that's going to happen. But if you don't get it out there, you're never going to know if you don't take that final step. So you weren't rejected. It was more like you just weren't accepted. And the next word is yet. Yet. Because if you were read a, well, read anything on Stephen King, he <laughs> wallpapered his room in rejection letters, and look where he is now. And the other thing is, do we really all have to be best-selling authors, best-selling this, that, the other thing? Do we all have, I mean, is that the goal in life, or is the goal to be happy? Is the goal to be peaceful? Is the goal to just do something that will give you some kind of pleasure? You know, do I want to be a best-selling author? Absolutely, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not. I've always wanted to do this. I would love it. I don't know who, I got a review on Amazon yesterday. I mean, it's slow going. The book was only published in January, January. But it was somebody who said enthralling and enticing. Well, of course, that makes you feel good. So, I mean, it just makes you feel good. It's like, wow, I spent all that time and somebody enjoyed it. So that makes me happy that somebody could read the book and enjoy it. And it's not ego because I've been, I made a living writing and speaking. That's what I did. So it's not, it's not ego. I feel like it's a gift. Like you talk about spirituality, that's a gift. Why can't that be best-selling? Why, why not, though? Why is it that we always say, but it's not this or it's not that, or but I can't do this and I can't do that? We, we're t we tell ourselves that a lot, and I think it's ingrained in ourselves. Well, Jessica went to Singapore, Thailand, one of those countries up there. What was it, Jessica? Taiwan. There you go, Taiwan, close. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if somebody said to her, oh, you really can't go to Taiwan, Jessica, to study for school, and she believed it, well, she wouldn't have gone. When I was in graduate school, people told me, and I, was, I went for writing. When I was in graduate school, and I was in my 30s, I had, I had a full-time radio job and quit it because I, I was not happy with the management. I didn't like it. I said, I have to move on. And I wasn't married but I was worried about everything. Oh my God, I'm you know, 32, I'll be 35 when I graduate. And a friend of mine said, you'll be 35 anyway. So I'm like, oh, good point. So 35 with the degree. And Kay here, who's part of the, the library, and by the way, thank you very much for Friends of the Library for sponsoring it. When, when I told Kate I wanted to do the book talk, she said, I was like, you know, tell me a little about you. We talked about writing, and then she came out with, you'll love this one, you'll love this one. Yeah, I only have two masters. Really? Yes, and one's from Brown. Oh, yeah, yeah, only two masters and one's from Brown. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, I have one that's from UMass Dartmouth and I starved my way through it. <laughs> but, but again, who has just two master's degrees? And it's not even the education. I don't believe that you have to be a, a master's graduate or a doctorate, although, Jessica, I expect that from you. A and you. <laughs> But that's because I'm about education, because this is even educational, just being here and listening. Not that I have all the answers. I absolutely do not have all the answers. But I am here to say that my characters do in my book. They have the answers that I don't have. Giving birth to this book, I cried. And I cried, I literally cried. Luke knows. He said, push the button, Mom. We're not cleaning the kitchen. I can't push the button, and I did. And once it was out there, he said, okay, and then walked away, of course, because <laughs> he was done. And I was like, oh, what did I do? Uh, yeah, well, I'm going to find a way to continue doing it. And I don't want to put those roadblocks anymore. I don't want to say I can't do it. My mother, and she has passed 20 years ago, when I was in seventh grade, and my, my parents were poor, and they were uneducated. And when I was in maybe sixth grade at Christmas, now I'm dating myself, Joanne. My mother bought me, and how she did this, I have no idea, an electric typewriter. And she said to me, and she was from Russia, she came during the war, so it was that time period. I mean, literally, they had, she had nothing. And she said, I want you to write your books. I know you want to write your books in her little Russian accent. Do it. And she gave me that typewriter, that electric typewriter. And yes, I went into journalism, I went into a different branch, but this was my love. And Sometimes I think, oh man, I wish I did it before. But I didn't, and it doesn't matter, it's gone. The past is gone, the present is now. It's whatever you wanna do now. So write that book, write the book. 
write the book. And I noticed that you said, well, I wrote a book, but it's only nonfiction. I actually narrate nonfiction because I think it's easier in a way, <laughs> because it's, it's somewhat you know, journalistically cut and dry, and that's you know, what you do. But, but you won't know until you, you know, do a blog if you want to start out, or do whatever it is you want to do. Like, what is it you want to do? And it doesn't have to be all the great things, and it doesn't, and you don't have to be the best in everything that you're doing. I mean, you just don't. It's definitely not the money all the time. It's definitely not the money. Would I like to have more? Absolutely. Would everybody in the room like to have more? I've had money and I haven't had money. What's the difference? The difference is this was a gift that I have been given, and I really do believe in a universal spirit and a connection, and I believe it was a gift, and I think that's why the book wrote it itself, literally wrote itself, and so is the second book, because there's, there is... It's not religion, it's sort of spirituality in a sense, but it really is an energy and you give it off. If you give off those positive energies, you can do anything that you want. And I hope, I hope that, that you will. And so while I know I'm supposed to be promoting my book and here's my $10 book, please buy it, it's, it's more than that. It's, it's wanting to say, hey, if I could do it, you could do it too. And I hope you do, I hope all you do. Every single one of the people I know in this room and not. And I, I am humbly grateful to have this support, humbly grateful that enough people thought to show up and just listen to me because really, I'm nobody. I'm just somebody who wrote a book. Of course, when it's on the bestseller list, then you can say you knew me when, but, <laughs> but right now that's all I have. So, so I'm not gonna read because I don't wanna give away. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. I'm not gonna like, who knows? But, but at any rate, this is the book. It's First Do Harm, which, by the way, is the Hippocratic Oath, of course, First Do No Harm. <laughs> I thought that was clever. <laughs> yeah, I went to the doctor, literally my primary care, and he said, you wrote a book? I'm very neurotic about medical things. I said, yeah, it's a medical suspense thriller. And he said, really? And I noticed that one person bought a book that day. I was wondering if it was him. <laughs> it's like, wow, did my doctor do that? Because if he did, he's going to put me on some serious medication, <laughs> especially with one of these characters. But it, yes, Jane. How about reading just the first paragraph for us? The first paragraph? Read us a little part. Yes, 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 yes. Or pick Michelle, it at random. Yeah. I could pick it up, read it. Okay, I mean, if. Whichever. Problems with reading? Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, this is gonna give away a little part of it, but just pretend you didn't hear it. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, somebody dies. I'm not gonna tell you who. When the news hit the airwaves that had died at the hand of an unknown gunman, Simon Coots had just started drinking at the Blue Moon, a crowded, noisy dive in South Boston. Like the other patrons, he studied the television screen, sipping his cold beer, only he did not take part in the buzz of conversation around him. My God, a woman said, did an oxman lose a kid? Yep, and now another relative, her companion said, shaking her head. Who the hell cares, brayed the bartender, pouring a mug of foaming beer from the tap. The man thinks he's better than all of us, and from what I know, he grew up right here in Southie like the rest of us. Simon stood in his bar stool, thinking about the past. I don't want you to actually shoot to kill my cousin, Danny had told him in a secluded corner at the Red Tavern Bard and Grill. I'm not talking murder, just, just injure him, just hurt him a bit. Shoot him near the heart. Do you think you can manage that? <laughs> what if I do kill him, Simon whispered, unable to finish his meal. The restaurant was hopping with a noisy dinner crowd the night they met, but they kept their voices low anyway. Simon had to lean over the table to hear Danny's response. You won't, and if you do, Danny shrugged, I'll take it from there, don't worry. What's your price? Danny told him. Simon's eyes widened. He had never had that much money at one time in his entire life. Yeah, I'll do it, he agreed without hesitation. Now, Simon pulled his wallet from his back pocket, placing several bills on the bar top. Billy, drinks for the house all around, he shouted with a dismissive wave of his hand. People cheered. Peter O'Malley shouted from across the way. Where did you get all that dough, Simon? 
from an old friend who owed me a favor, Simon called, wondering what he was going to do with the rest of his $500. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that was fun. I'd like to read. And like I said, I did do the audible version too, which was kind of fun. Um, yeah, so it's, it, that's, <laughs> that's I can't even believe we did that. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jane, for, for, <laughs> for doing that. So, so yeah, so that's, that's it. I mean, that's really all I have to say. I don't know if anybody has questions specifically about anything, publishing-wise or whatever. I have a question. Mm -hmm. And, you know, makes you kind of think of certain things and you wonder, you know, this, this crazy doctor who's, um, you know, inflicting injury or something, but from what you read, it's, uh, it goes in a different direction. So what I want to know is, is the cover out or is it something, a tease? Good question. It's, well, let me ask you, what do you think happens in the book? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the book cover, any book cover, even, <laughs> whether it's good or bad, the visual does make you wonder. One thing about publishing, and if you do publish your book or what you're doing, one thing, again, I'm not a visual person. Michelle and I work together in cable. We, we cover news and do news stories, and she's, she's better at the visual aspects of the actual video and, and what we can capture. So I didn't really have that, that feeling, and this is what the graphic designer came. But, but yes, first do no harm is, for most people know that comes from the Hippocratic Oath, which is first do no harm. So when you read it, it's like, okay, so does he do something because of this? And yes, I mean, you got it. But is it a tease? All covers are teases. That the covers of any book, which I'm actually learning myself, will draw people in. People have told me that. They actually have said, if, if I see a, a cover of the book, I have to say I'm, I'm intrigued by the cover or not, yeah. which is kind of interesting, uh, in my opinion. I like the next cover of the House of the Broken Glass, too. Yes, I, it's just, it's interesting. It, it's, you sort of get people thinking. But according to my new like, Amazon review, it's enticing and enthralling. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I wanted to like, just text the person and say, wow, enticing? That's exciting. <laughs> Anybody else? Did you use the same graphic artists for both covers? I, I did. I actually, yes. There's a website called Fiverr, mm -hmm. and there's two Bs. And you could look for someone to edit your book, uh, do graphic design. There's all kinds of services that people like request. Mm -hmm. And I poked around that site and found a young man who um, actually lives in North Carolina. Uh -huh. And uh, we just, we struck up... <laughs> an internet relationship type thing. And I just really liked him. We, we kind of hit it off, and so he does do my books. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it is nice, actually, because we have that little, you know, that little, what's the word, camaraderie? Is that a word? Yeah, that's a word, right? So <laughs> I couldn't spell helmet today. That's how busy I was. <laughs> Jane, thank you. <laughs> you spell a helmet for me. But I really can spell. Could you talk a little bit about the self-publishing process? You know, lay out what you did and how you I, I could, yes, I will do that quickly because I, I know not everyone's a writer in the room, but I will say this. The whole self-publishing industry can be very overwhelming. I know because I'm not that much of a techie. So my roadblock was, oh, yeah, well, I wrote this book, but, you know, how do I do that? But there's so many people out there to help you. So KDP is Kindle Direct Publishing, and it, obviously it's self-publishing. And they, on their website, they will get you through each step of what to do. And my best advice to anyone who wants to publish anything, even if it's a short story or like whatever it is, is to just say, okay, I'm going to do a little bit each day. You have to do whatever it is, by the way, every single day. Michelle knows because we've been walking every single day because that's what we decided to do. I mean, if you want to exercise, you have to kind of do it every day. Oh, right, I missed today. I was kind of a little tired today getting yeah. ready for this. But, but yeah, you chunk it down. You say, okay, what is it that I need? Make the notes and then do it and not get frustrated with yourself because once you start getting frustrated, you might as well just hang it up. 
so just so it's it the website actually has very explicit directions. There are some technical aspects. Ask someone. There, there's plenty of people out there in internet land, and just people you probably know mm -hmm. who would be glad to help you. And and I that's how I was helped. I mean, my husband had the technology mm -hmm. for Audible, and that was a lot of fun. I mean, going into the closet and hiding in the closet was like a lot of fun. <laughs> so, yeah, you just have to chunk it down. I mean, it, the the process though is. I want to say lengthy, but I don't know if that's the word. It's. It, it, it's just time consuming. Things are time The reason why my second book will be released in June more quickly than this one was because of the character development. And plus, the more you do it, of course, the more you do anything, the better you get. Um, yes? I just had a question about the audible narrating. I thought that was interesting. Is that something, how did people get into that? Like, how did you get into being an audiobook narrator? I have no clue. <laughs> I think my sister who lives in California says, I really like audiobooks. I think you have a nice voice. I think you should do that. That's what happened. And I said, oh, OK. And then I looked at Audible. And then they said, if you want to be a narrator. And then I said, OK. And then my husband got some equipment. And then Michelle helped me, because she just did. And she said, oh, this is what you have to do. And she helped me with the editing part of it. And then I just worked through it that way. It's v narrating is exhausting. It's time consuming. It the editing's a lot, but it's not impossible. It just takes time. I mean, I could do it relatively fast because of my field, at, because I was in radio, because I just know how to do that. But the technology is a little bit tricky. If if anybody in here writes anything and wants it published and wants it narrated, I would just suggest, unless you really have a passion to do it, just have someone else do it. Either you know pay them to do it, or you could do a royalty share, whatever. Too. What's the baseline amount of money that you have to come up with up front to self-publish? There really is no cost per se. This book I'm selling for ten dollars because that's the lowest because of the printing costs. But there, there's really no cost to it. I mean, if you write a book, which I did. And you put it on Amazon as an ebook. There's no. But there's cost. a cost to hiring the graphic designer. Oh, and oh. Have someone to edit the book for you because you really should have someone besides yourself edit your own book. Yes, but I have people I know edit okay. edit the book. I mean, again, I th I think part of the whole publishing process is just talk to people. Hey, you know, like edit. Can you read this? Can you do? You know, there's there's just so much help. Like this cover is the print, the audio book. And the ebook cover, and it was a hundred and, and and a demonstration copy for one hundred and thirty six dollars, which really isn't a lot of money for a book. I'm not doing that. I'm not taking the time to do that. It's just I don't have that visual. It, you know, the hundred thirty six is no big deal. But to actually get the ebook up, it's nothing. You put it up, you put a price on it, and then you just go for it, and then you know you just promote yourself and and. But there's no, it's not like thousands of dollars. I guess is what I'm saying. You know, you know, there's some things you have to pay for. An editor, like, uh, you know, I charge $1,000 an hour when I edit. OK, you were supposed to laugh about that. I would never get $1,000 for a whole book. <laughs> but, but I think the going rate, an hour. And Jane, you, you might even know. It's $50 an hour or whatever it is. But you also have to work with individuals, because you don't know where they are. So I mean, I've done some editing. But again, it's hard work, because you don't know necessarily where the other person's coming from. I don't narrate anybody else's fiction because I don't know their characters and I think it's their baby in a sense and since I don't know it I don't want to be what's the word not insincere that's not the word I'm looking for Kate when I'm, I don't want to be I don't I want their book to come alive for them and I don't know if I'm the person who could do it because I don't know their characters because I write and, and do my own how, how did you protect your writing like did you copyright it or you know oh all writing is copyrighted like it's yours the, the rules have changed so much. I, I really can go into so much history. But basically, once you write something, you copy, it's co it is yours. It, it's copyrighted. It is your material. That wasn't always the case in years, years ago. But I did get what's called an ISBN number, which is in the back of the book. And you, there's a, the, is it Bowker, Joyce, B-O-W-K-E-R? I think I'm pronouncing it right. Yeah, and it's, they give you the ISBN number. 
you do have to pay for the ISBN numbers, or Amazon will actually give you one for an ebook. But if you get it published, you have to have your own. So yeah, I mean, I guess there's some cost. To me, it's it's a low cost though in general. But I'm trying to think of what I, I and you could buy it in bulk. I forget how many I bought, but it's yeah, Bowker, B O W K E R. Um, and they'll give you the, the number. Well, I think I bought 10 of them. But you only need it for the print copy, not the ebook and not the Audible book. So, you know, I mean, the industry really has changed. You talk about being rejected by agents. Seriously, if you really want to do it, uh, throw it up on Amazon. Throw it up. And then just tell, tell people you know, you know, and they'll, they'll support you. People support you. Like in music, you can write a, write a song in the, you know, you, if you have a band number and you, you play it, you don't own your music. You don't, you don't, in, you don't own your music? In most bands that you hear the song don't own their own music. They lose their, their rights to it. Is that the way it is in publishing also? It depends. It depends what you want to do. For example, I did sign a seven-year contract that Amazon owns the book in that sense uh, for seven years. But this is my, and I've thought about it, like do I want to do that, do I not? Well, Amazon's flourishing right now. It's the way to get your name out. Of course, Instagram is working very well, Kate. No, but it is, it is. It's like social media is really, really out there. So I don't mind selling my work because this isn't my first book and it's not gonna be my last. The House of the Broken Glass will not be the last. So if, if I continue doing this, well, not if, I plan on continuing to do this, at some point, hopefully, I'll have a following that I won't need to do that necessarily, but. So Amazon just has an agreement with that one book. Yes. You know, another one, you go to U of Infinite or something. You know, oh yeah, absolutely. I, you're not just, they don't own you, they own your book. Amazon. Amazon, so if you wrote another one, you go to U of Infinite or something. Oh, I could, I could try to go the traditional yeah, publishing yeah. room. There's no restrictions with publishing where we can't, you know, conflict of interest with other publishing companies. What, well, what Amazon's... Fine print on oh, well, it's actually, there is fine print. I've read it all, believe me, I've read it all. But basically, what, well, I mean, because you have to, because it's still a contract. I mean, this is, this is a business. I mean, it's creative, but it's a business. You know, I, I obviously want to make money with my books. But Amazon says, we will have the rights to this book for seven years. And... But then what be better way when you're first, in a sense, starting than to, throw, to use that, that resource? I didn't know that about music, though. That surprises me. Singing is everything. They, they, whoever they sign with, they own them for like 15 years. Oh, whoever they sign with, yes. But it's still your work. With, with music, a lot of them, like the Beatles, don't even own their own music. Actually, Michael Jackson, I think, one of these it depends what route you want to go. It, it, yes, they do. Amazon owns this book for the next seven years. Seven years after that, you're, it's back to your hands. You can go. Yes, and in seven years, I could have five other books with this same series. But again, if you continually go, then you can go any route you want. But you, I, believe, I believe that you have to start somewhere. Because when my husband and I discussed it, he's like, well, I don't know. I don't know if you should give her the rights to your book. I'm like, well, you know something? I, it's, it's a forum. It's a way to get your name out. And, and Kate helped me with Instagram. And there's, there's other ways to you know, do social media and advertising. Um, so I don't, that doesn't bother me as much. But that's just me. I know people who just wouldn't do that. It's, it's mine. It's mine. I'm, but when you hold on to something, it never gets out. When you hold on to it too tightly, you can't. I learned that from Joyce, right? It's true. When you hold on to it, it's like, you know. It's like if you hold on to your money, if you just hold on to it and you're not giving and receiving, then you're not going to go anywhere. So I don't, I don't really care about that. I have to contract with somebody because I have to have the book. And it was not hard enough to publish it, but there were a lot of steps and a lot to the process to get this finished product. What's the time frame from when you first initiated Well, it took me a year to write this book and to get it ready for publication because, of, because I am a professional writer and I made sure that it was the best it could be before I was ready to do that. So it took a year. But now that I know the process, the other books I could probably pump out in, in a shorter time. But right now, you could leave here 
write something and throw it up on Amazon. N now you can do that. Because again, you don't need an ISBN. You could do an ebook. You could do whatever you want. You could do a short story and have it published. So you Amazon will put it up for that? They'll, they'll put it up. Just go ch check out KDP. They'll tell you what the rules are. Y within 24 to 48 hours, you could have the book. I, uh, the, print, the, the print, I know, has to have so many pages. But an, an audio book or an ebook doesn't have to have a, a length, per se. This book was uh, audio is six hours and 17 minutes. And you get paid, because I think it's ridiculous. The audio book is $20. I'm sorry. I mean, I love my book and everything. But 20 bucks for a book is a lot of money. <laughs> people are paying it, though, because people want the audio book. So when I get a sale for my audio book, I'm like, wow, they must really want to listen to that. But it, and it took me longer than six hours to do the work, to narrate it. Um, but again, I knew the characters and what was happening. So it, it was that a little bit easier in that sense. Yeah, so that's my story. <laughs> you know, Kate was so cute. She's like, do you have something formal? I'm like, oh, I was supposed to write something. <laughs> and so I'm writing names on napkins, whatever, you know, whatever works. <laughs> Michelle knows, she works with me. But it's a lot of fun. But, but really, whatever it is, and you know, I have a very good friend in the room who does flower arrangements and is real busy with flowers and nature and stuff. And that, it's just a beautiful thing because she belongs in that arena. She doesn't belong at like McDonald's. You know, it's like you find something that you like and then you go after it, period. You know, you just, whatever that is. And you know, if you never make the bestseller list, like whatever, so what? I'd rather die trying than not live at all. Ooh, that was a quote. <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you. That was good. It's a good ending. <laughs> so I do appreciate everybody be, I, uh, by the way, I can't cook. Every, people who know me in this room know I can't cook. So those are store-bought cookies, and the vegetables are from Shaw's. So please feel free to eat them and know that you will not have, nothing will happen to you. <laughs> nothing will happen to you. If I baked cookies, you'd be in trouble. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming.